Warm welcome guys to the quintessential experience. Yeah, it's an experimental episode. This one I'm by myself. And I'm gonna speak about our leader, the legend, Julius Chichumalema, the CIC, Commander in Chief, President of the EFN. So basically I'm gonna do an analysis on him. I like to qualify this that Julius is a great leader amazing leader. He's been a member of ANC for, since the age nine. And then he grew to the structures of ANC. 2008, he was appointed the leader, youth leader. 2008 until 2012, up until he was expelled. But this guy comes from Sishepo in Limpopo, where he grew up with his late mother, who was a domestic worker, and also his great his grandmother, who passed away in 2009. Yeah, father of three is married now. Great guy, a great orator, a guy who's in, who has amazing rhetoric flares. A guy who could mesmerize the crowd. You can hear even when he speaks. That guy is so gifted. I admire Juju Malema, even when I was still in school, he came addressing the, 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 the masses in the rally there, was like, yeah, this guy is a proper, proper revolutionist who's gonna actually save us. But since growing, studying more leaders, understanding how the world works now, I wanna analyze Julius Malik in this way. I know I'm gonna get a lot of criticism, but it's it's my point, it's my opinion. And you can also comment on on the comments there, rectify me where I'm wrong. But I believe as 2024 is approaching the elections, we need to be more politically illiterate to study more of our leaders. So Julius Malima the EFF is ten, is 10 years now, it's the 10th year anniversary. It was founded 2018, yeah. And this guy has an amazing ability to associate himself with important dates. Look at the date that EFF was founded, 26 July. It is the day in which Shea Guevara and Fidel Castro had a victory. So he's associating himself with these guys so that you can see that yeah, this guy is a proper revolutionary. Because Julius is indeed a formidable opponent and is a proper, proper politician who's constantly studying, admire that guy. So it's symbolizing you, you, you associate, associate yourself with people who a revolutionary so that even people can can see and gravitate towards you that's why i say julius is the master he studied this symbolism and he's mastering it quite well because even with the time of robert mugabe at the right time he went there to zimbabwe and actually support Mugabe, so that people may view him as this person who's gonna save them and give hope Fundamental also to the youth, because the youth are gravitating towards Uchulias. Mumalema, they, when he speaks, he speaks this with this rhetoric flair and gives the youth the rhetoric food. That food, those ways, they'll heal their soul, because imagine, you can see in this country that the youth is unemployment, the youth is drugs, they are marginalized, they are not excluded. So when they, that's why they, they, they gravitate towards Uchulias because of they see that this guy is, is the hope. He can take them to the promised land. But let's look at this. Is he re, really gonna take us to the promised land? Is he really gonna challenge the white capital? Because capitalism is a monster. It's hard to break down or disarticulate this capitalism because of 
is perpetuating itself even through black people. So I'm saying this to say Julius Malema, his objective now with the youth is his ability to mobilize the youth. And then what since he's mobilized the youth and then the angry youth and tame that power and turn it into a bargaining chip in which he's gonna negotiate with these people, this white monopoly, monopoly capital. And then he's going to get the concessions there, he's going to get deals. So he's like a valve. A valve works in this way that once the youth or the masses are in anger, they look towards Juju. What's the plan? Juju has the ability to pacify the masses and give us the rhetoric food in which we need for our souls and then the anger goes down the taming and so it's his job and then the white party the white capital gives our leaders the way i view them they are like prefects or caretakers who are constantly managing us and then they give them those trinkets which is your house the cars the beautiful lavish life they want they reparate them they give them the land they need but are we really gonna get the land that's the question we we, we need to look at it because on the funding manifesto of the EFF they had the police even and the lemon Tama can attest to this that they had the policy that this policy it is the land appropriation without compensation so on that policy EFF after a certain time, they amended that policy and added in use. Because there's a meeting which Julius had in Pal with the farmers. He told them that, no, my people want the land, but they want the land that is not going to disturb productivity. Which means a land which is not in use, that's reject land. Because you can look at the land, even here in Mamilodi, the land in which people are staying. Some of it is risky, it's near the river, so when the rain comes, they had risk. A lot of people have lost their lives, even with the floods. So that is the kind of land in which our leaders are negotiating for us. I don't know, please correct me if I'm wrong. Also, on their manifesto, on their policies, they've added, they, they used to have this Sankara oath. And I wish they bring it back because they took it away from the EFF, on the EFF policy that the Sankara oath, to those who don't know the Sankara oath, is the oath in which the late Thomas Sankara put and said that government leaders, they must use this Sankara oath, they must use public transport, public services so if our leaders use the public services use the public transport i guarantee you that we're gonna have proper 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 health care now our health care is in shambles now our roads is full of holes so if they had that that oath which is also can be implemented in the government i think we'll have proper 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 health care but now Capitalism doesn't allow that. Now, our politicians have shares in this company, into, into this multinational company. So, it's a very difficult thing to do. So, I'm saying this to say that, are we, are we really gonna be, manage to stop this capitalism? I don't think so. So, Julius is a, it's a, it's a very fundamental, fundamental and strong leader. He's a good orator. A lot of people love Julius, but if Julius was, I was, I was, I was reading actually on this guy, our late hero, uh, Robert Sugunque. That guy, the government didn't want, the government of the time. They even put him to jail and put him in in solitary confinement 
that he has to be alone because of his dangerous. His ideas are very dangerous. So, if really Julius was was really challenging the white monopoly, white monopoly capital, I believe by now it's been ten years since the EFF has been running. Maybe the guy will be assassinated by now. Maybe this guy will be muzzled on his pages online because once you start challenging the status quo you have you gain these enemies so why are they not challenging Julius why are they not closing his accounts why are they not muzzling his social media accounts because of remember it's, it's, it's propaganda so I believe this white capital has allowed to be a left wing which is going to challenge this right wing, this status quo that let's allow him to, to, to give these rhetoric flares and speeches but there's a certain level or a threshold that has been put out there that you can't cross this line. Once you cross this line then it's going to be a problem for, for him. Yeah. Julius Tujumale, I would like to hear your thoughts also on the comment section. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be able to do more of these videos, even cover the Nkanka Lux, analyze him also. Even the, 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 the shutdown that is coming up now on the 20th, the national shutdown, which is mobilized by the EFF. This guy, I believe this, it's a good thing, but I believe that it's a marketing strategy for the EFF and Juju and he's putting himself in a nice position for 2024. Don't be surprised May, when Julius Malema becomes vice president or becomes the president of the country because of now we're moving towards this collision government. And the father of this collision government is, is by the name of Roberto. So I'm gonna have to do a video also analyzing Rob Herzog, this 2024 collision government which we are facing with. That when you look at it, ANC now, I don't think it's gonna get over 50 percent. So they're mobilizing this collision so that they can take up the ANC government. But can we trust the DA? Can we trust the PA? Can we trust Human Mashaba? Can you trust the EFF? Because clearly also the, the NC has failed us, but we need to we need to pick, we need to actually analyze which one is the better option, which one is actually a better devil between all these parties and actually have these talks, have these conversations so that we can actually come up with solutions. Guys, I hope you you have a great time and I love you all. I, I love Julius Malema. I love Juju. And it was my analysis. And I hope you guys engage. Let's engage on this topic. And yeah, this is the quintessential experience. I'm out. Remember, I'm leaving you with this famous words of Maya Angelou. People will forget what you did to them. People will forget what you said. But they won't forget how you make them feel. Boom. I'm out.